anxiety, depression, and altogether low self-esteem were very normal for me growing up. I experienced consistent anxiety and depression, and I know why now. I'm not going to get into the fabric or the logistics as to why anxiety and depression were my baseline. But what I am going to get into is Adlerian psychology, right? Alfred Adler, and how he believed that the past does not equal the present, right? Growing up, I heard so many people say, my past made me the way that I am. The way that I am is a result of my past. I am a product of my past, right? But if Alfred Adler believed that the past does not equal the present, and not only that, but every moment you're a new you, right? Then you're not really, you, I mean, you, you are. You can carry the past with you if you want to, but you don't have to. And if every moment you're a new you, you can choose an entirely new set of thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, which those three both make up your personality. And of course, because our personality creates our personal reality, that completely transforms your experience of life. All you have to do is choose something new. I like how that rhymed. All you have to do is choose something new. All you have to do is do something different, right? If the past does not equal the present, which that contradicts a lot of things that I have always heard and believed, you know, from people and everything. Oh, my past made me this way. My past made me the way that I am. Okay, cool. Doesn't mean you can't choose something different and choose to channel that energy and that vibration altogether different moving forward on a daily basis as you wake up. Meditation is a great way of doing that. Um, I've been doing meditation for since like 2017 on a daily. My life has changed a lot. And just the fascinating thing is that the thing that stops us, I th I'm pretty sure I talked about this in yesterday's video, right? The thing that stops us is the familial the fam the familial or i should say the familiar thoughts feelings and behaviors right i have experienced firsthand how people don't like change because whenever i try to do something different there is the familial the comfort that stops me it, and it's kind of like a wall right and that wall is attachment to meaning, right? Oh, well, if you leave these people behind, what's the likelihood that you're going to find new people? I've cut people out of my life. I have. It's one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. People that are not healthy, that are reinforcements of past versions of myself, right? I was actually just having a talk with um, somebody yesterday, and I was telling this person, um, I've been kind of like, moving all over the place. I've been, you know, changing my life a lot. I've been um, in different places. Um, and, you know, I was, I was telling this person, I was like, it's fascinating how when you move on from people, right, they'll try to suck you back into a dynamic. And that's a challenge, right? Let's go back to the word familiar, familial, right? What was your life like growing up? What were the ideas? What were the beliefs that people instilled you with and got you to believe that you had to abide by? One of the most important parts of a child's life is, I mean, I would agree, I, I would both agree and argue, um, individuation and differentiation. Not every child gets that. And the, child's, the, 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 the children that don't get that usually end up in dynamics with people, um, you know, starting from the family, that are enmeshed, right? Enmeshment is the opposite of individuality. Enmeshment is the opposite of boundaries. Enmeshment is the opposite of autonomous or uh, autonomy, right? When you don't get that, you end up getting sucked into a dynamic of feeling, you know, obligated to buy into all these ideas and these beliefs that people have for you. I've had so much experience with this. I really have. I grew up believing that I had to, you know, be 
responsible for people's emotions and I had to, you know, caretake and stuff and do this, that, and the other, I'm not going to, you know, say the logistics as to why this unfolded. Um, but I am now learning that whenever somebody comes to me expecting me to be that for them or somebody else, it's a boundary violation on my end, right? Somebody coming to me expecting me to caretake somebody else's emotions, my role, the familial role, right? The true to form, right? That in and of itself for the longest time was my self-image. Oh, I am the caretaker for people, right? No. No. <laughs> that keeps me trapped inside of a limiting way of living, right? When you carry that, or I should say, when I carry that as my self-image, it just keeps me trapped inside of this little box, right? This is Chris's life. It's right here. It's not all of this other beautiful, flowing, different stuff that Chris creates for himself. No, it's right here. And it's just so fascinating because stepping outside of that true to form familiar role is kind of challenging because it's like it's almost as if it's death right oh well chris does not know anything outside of this role he doesn't know any of this stuff and this is kind of scary right and this also goes back to what i was talking about in yesterday's video of turning fear into excitement right just because you've done something your entire life does not mean that you need to keep doing it, especially if you don't like it. And this is where seeing yourself differently comes into play, right? And by the way, the way that you see yourself, other people will see you. If you see yourself as somebody who is respected, other people are going, and if they, if they don't, then they're just obviously, you know, they're incapable of that. Um, and that's just, you know, cutting off and out. Um, but yeah, stepping into the unknown is actually really cool. Like, it's fascinating because um, I remember making a video about a week and a half ago, maybe. And I was talking about how I went to a concert. Um, it was totally not planned at all. I was just on a long ass drive listening to music. And I came back. It was a public concert. And I went to the concert. And I had a great fucking time. But while I was there, I was, thinking to myself, I was thinking to myself, I was like, wow, my life is monotonous. And that's not to generalize that saying that entirely it's monotonous. But um, I've been, I, I was previously scared to step into the unknown. I was previously scared to just, you know, do things different. Um, there are all these beliefs and these thoughts and these ideas that come with you know, it's like, just, just, just move forward. Just, just move forward. Just, just take that step. Just, just try something different. There's like a wall, right? There's like a wall, but what if this happens? What if that happens? What if, just, just move. The fear is going to be there. Fear of the unknown is going to be there. And the other thing that stopped me from the unknown was my beliefs of what is inside the unknown. You know, um, I thought that maybe this or that is in the unknown, but little did I know that I was just projecting my own already, already known experiences into the unknown. The unknown is the unknown. You don't know what's there. And that's the reality of it, right? And so when you can see that and then actually be like, oh, okay, well, the unknown is magical. The unknown, like the, the, the fascinating thing here, I'll, I'll, um, I'll try to portray it this way. I don't know how much of childhood people remember, how much of their childhoods. Um, I remember some of mine. Um, but when you're a child, you don't really care about what it is that you're doing. You're just having fun. And I feel like as we grow in adulthood, we kind of become stagnated. We kind of become calcified, especially with all of these ideas and these beliefs about ourselves that we learn. Uh, and ideas and beliefs about life that we learn, right? That really stop us from being our highest, best selves. And stepping into the unknown is actually exciting as hell. Forget failure. Forget, you know, how things could go wrong. It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't. It really doesn't matter. Just stepping into the unknown and experiencing life differently, right? So pair uh, stepping into the unknown with self-image 
everything about a person's self at around the age of like 30, right, is known. It doesn't mean that it's what they really want. It doesn't mean that that's the way that they want to see themselves. It just means that that's what's known. It's a pattern. It's based in thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. It's their personality. It's been consistent. And even if they're not happy with it, it's known. It's comfortable. It's familiar, right? Stepping beyond that and into the unknown. It is wild the potential of expansion a person's identity can take and can make. You know, it really is. Like, and this is, this is what's so cool about personality is just how flexible it is, right? You can change your thoughts, you can change your feelings, and you can change your behaviors. And with that, you can actually change the way that you experience life altogether. I think that that's very fascinating. So you can change your self-image. Let me end off with this, by the way. There are multiple factors that will limit you from changing your self-image. First is you. Second is the people in your life. If they have unhealthy boundaries, or I should say if they, if they, um, if they have permeable boundaries, and they keep you or they try to keep you true to form because you've played this fucking role in their life your entire life and that's comfortable and familiar for them and anything outside of that for them they don't like and they want to keep you true to form right you will hold yourself back if you allow yourself to and other people will hold you so will hold you back if you allow them to right that's just the reality of it um and i would say that those are the two main things that stop the person from stepping into the unknown and transforming their self-image which completely transforms and changes a person's life that's just the reality of it um i'm excited to step into the unknown previously i was terrified because all of the same neurochemical hits that came with true to form and doing the same fucking thing over and over and over and over and over again just realizing i don't want to do the same fucking thing over and over and over again it gets fucking monotonous and not only that but just like seeing how much your life can change your life can transform just by doing things differently. That's fucking magical. It's such an awesome experience. It really is.